Hello, my name is Matt Brook. I am co-founder and lead developer of Remuse. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive into Remuse Kit, which is our new cutting edge machine learning app that can deeply and separate different drum elements from their individual mic stems. A little bit about me, as well as being a software engineer, I'm also a studio engineer, and we are here at the lovely Mayfield studio where I spend hell of a lot of my time. I work on all kinds of sessions at this studio, but something I really love is recording and mixing drums. And not only does Remuse Kit save me a ton of time, but it also gives me loads more flexibility and versatility when I come to do the mix, or even sometimes in preparation for tracking drums. So I want to spend some time taking you through the entire feature set of the app, and hopefully it will help you see how it can save you a ton of time and give you loads more options when you come to record and mix drums. So without any further faffing, let's get into it. So I want to show you our project. I have it open here, as you can see. I use Pro Tools, but you don't have to. Our app will work with any DAW because it's a standalone application. So I just want to quickly show you what we recorded. We've got 12 channels of drums in total. We have two kick, two snare, two toms, a hi-hat, left and right overheads, left and right room, and corridor. Okay, so now we know what we're working with. Let's open up Remuse Kit. So this is the main screen for Remuse Kit. It's pretty simple. We have our big box in the middle here. We have a little switch down at the bottom left. This switch is from local processing to cloud processing. A little bit more on that later. We've got two buttons on the bottom here, and then we've got a slider on the right-hand side. And we also have a little settings button on the top left, which you can click. Let's go through these bits one by one then. In the middle here is our box where all of our audio tracks will live once we import them. In fact, why don't we try that now? So let me grab up our audio files here. And these are all the tracks we want to process today. So we can either drag these straight into the middle box here, and they'll all import like that. Let's extend this a little bit. There we go, right. And if we want, we can remove one or all of these by hitting the little trash can icon in the top right. Or instead of dragging and dropping, we can hit the import files button, which is right at the bottom here. And we can do the exact same thing this way. I think that's what we want. Cool, so we've got our audio files in. Let's hit the settings menu and have a look at some of the settings in there. So first and foremost, we want to know where the process files are going to end up. And this is displayed in our current directory path, which is here. This will automatically be set to a new folder, which is inside the folder where you dragged your audio clips from. But if we want, we can change this by either directly typing into the address bar here. So maybe I want to call it just output there. Let's spell that correctly. Or if we don't want to type it out manually, we can hit the set directory for output audio files button here. And we've got a folder selector here, which we can navigate anywhere with. So let's actually do that. Let's just put a new folder and call it output, spell it correctly that time. There we go. And that is the folder that I want to save the process files in. Underneath our directory path, we have three options. We have merge bleed, pre-isolate stems before splitting, and generate track names automatically. So let's run through those quickly, starting from the top, merge bleed. Now this setting is a bit of a time saver. If you are doing some deep bleed jobs within Remuse Kit, normally in the output path, you'll receive your deep bleed files, and then in a separate folder, you'll receive some bleed files. So they're the polar opposite of the deep bleed files, which contain the stuff that you wanted to take out in the first place. So when you've got a project with, let's say, 10, 12 stems, and you're doing deep bleed jobs on all of those, you'll also get 10, 12 bleed files, which you might not want to do anything with, but then they're always there to blend back into the mix as you see fit. What the merge bleed option does is combine all the bleed files, so all the files with the audio that we didn't want, and it will combine them into one file. If you've used some virtual drum instruments before, this can be an option sometimes, and it's quite nice maybe sometimes if you want to just blend a little bit back of the general kit spill, however you feel you want to use it creatively in the mix. The pre-isolate stems before splitting option basically means that if we select that, the app is going to add another splitting stage before the main deep bleed and separation phase that will remove everything that's not drums from the tracks. Now this can come in really handy, for instance, if you've tracked musicians in the same room together and you're getting a lot of bass or guitar in all of your overheads or room mics, and you don't want to have to contend with those when you start mixing. This is actually super interesting, so we're going to make a whole nother video about this, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss that. And we're planning on putting together a load more cool content anyway. So click that button so you don't miss out. Anyway, the Generate Track Names Automatically button, if we click that, that and go back. We'll basically let Remuse Kit guess what the file name of the process output files should be. So if we remove these, now that we have that option selected, I'm going to drag these in again. And as you can see, it's kind of done its best to simplify the track names. If we want to change these ourselves, we can. We can just go to a given track, uh, select track name, and then adjust this. So I want to change that to overhead left. There we go. And we're going to change this to overhead right like that. 
and we are almost ready to hit go, but there are a couple of things to think about first. Let's come back to this slider here. Now this is literally just a wet and dry slider. So if you set the slider to zero here, you're gonna get totally unprocessed tracks back out of the app. And if you set it to 100, you're gonna get completely processed. And it basically will let you blend these to any degree you want. So actually you could say, I prefer to leave a little bit of the spill in for this particular track. So I'm gonna set it to, let's say 80. And in that case, you would get an 80% processed, but 20% unprocessed file back out. But the recommended setting is 100% because you're gonna get the bleed files anyway. And if you want, you can always manually blend those back in later. But in general, you find that you get a much more focused and tight mix if you leave them at 100% and then blend in image mics to taste. And let's cast our attention over to the bottom left corner here and have a look at our little switch, which switches between local processing and cloud processing. Now I'm gonna explain a little bit about the difference here and why you would wanna pick one over the other maybe. So running on a local machine, i.e. your machine, the speed at which Remus Kit processes can vary a lot depending on different situations. If you've got a nice graphics card and you're on a Windows machine, that's great because the app will be able to use that to accelerate the processing. If you're on a Mac or you don't have a fancy graphics card, that's okay because the app will default to CPU processing. Depending on your particular machine, this can be a little bit slower than GPU processing or quite a lot slower, which is why we've included a cloud processing mode. So let's toggle to that. That will change the switch to a turquoisey, greeny, bluey type color. And now instead of using your machine to process the files, it will upload all of these stems to our secure cloud server, process them with loads of super fast GPUs, and then send them back down the pipe. You'll have to try out both modes to see which works better for you under which situations. But in general, if you have an older Mac or a PC without a graphics card, you might want to consider switching over to cloud processing mode, depending on how many tracks you're trying to process at once. The machine here at Mayfield is pretty good, so I'm going to switch back over to local processing mode. So the last thing to look at is the track type dropdown for each of our audio tracks. Remuse Kit will try to intelligently guess which option it should be for each track. So for instance, down here, we have our kick microphones, which have been correctly identified as kicks. We have our snare microphones, which have been correctly identified as snares and our toms as toms. Now we get to our first overhead mic and we have a couple of options here. We can select image mic, which basically means that the app will split the audio out into four stems, which are kick, snare, toms, and cymbals. So you're gonna get each of those in the output folder and then you can blend those in however you want to. If instead you select symbols, the app will run a debleed job and it will try to split the symbols out from the rest of the kit. So in your debleed folder, you're gonna have the symbols and then in the separate bleed folder, you'll have the shells. So you can treat that as a separation job of two just symbols and shells, which can be really handy and time saving when it comes to adding that into your mix because then you have separate control over your cymbals and shells. Same thing goes for our other overhead mic here and also for our room mic. Now for this recording, instead of a left and right room mic, I use a mid and side setup. So what I've done is I've run those through a plugin that will convert mid and side into left and right and then bounce a stereo file from that. Remus Kit is happy to accept either mono files or stereo files and it doesn't matter what sample rate or bit depth you put your audio files in at, that's how you're gonna get them back out again. So for this project, I wanna set our overheads to symbols because I just wanna be able to separately adjust the shells and the symbols. But for the room mic, I wanna set it to image mic because I wanna be able to manually separate the kick, snare, toms and symbols from the rooms. And for the last mic, which is the corridor mic, I wanna do the same that we did for the overheads, just shells and symbols, just give me a little bit more fine control. And now I'm gonna hit go. And now all we have to do is wait. How do you remuse yourself? Okay, so once we're done, the name of the game is to go back into our DAW and set up our project in such a way that we are utilizing the new process stems in the best way. So I'm gonna take you through how I've done it for this particular project, but there's no limitations. You can set it up however you want, really the sky's the limit. We're gonna do some comparisons as well to the raw original recordings versus our new processed versions of those stems. So first let's have a listen to our kick drums. This is the original recording. Immediately, you can probably notice some snare coming through there. And that might be a problem for you in the mix, depending on how you're gonna process that. You'd usually tackle that with gating with a short release, but with Remus Kit, you don't have to. Let's have a listen to the process version of the same stem. Yep, definitely no snare in that. In fact, nothing else apart from kick drum. And it's the same story with the kick out microphone. I think this particular drummer is a really hard hitter on the snare, which is great, but it can lead to a little bit of extra spill in all your other mics. So the original. And now the Remus kit version. So let's have a listen to our snare drum mics. We have the snare top. Let's listen to the original recording. Yep, and this drummer is absolutely belting that hi-hat. So you're getting tons of hi-hat come through on that mic, particularly when it's opening up, which means that if we want to compress our snare to bring out the sustain, we're also going to be bringing out tons of that hi-hat, and you'll have to spend a long time to try and find that fine line between 
nice sustain and just removing that harshness from the hi-hat. But with Remuse Kit, you don't have to do that. Let's have a listen to our process snare then. That is a bit of a game changer moment because we no longer even have to consider hi-hat spill in our snare mics. We can just pick the best placement for that mic and get the sound that we expect out of the snare without having to worry about anything else. That extra flexibility offers a lot of new options that just weren't there before. And it's a similar story with our snare bottom mic, although with the snare bottom mic, you'll notice that the mic has picked up the extra snare activations from the kick drum. So let's have a listen. And that is really happening in the room. The snare is being activated by the kick a little bit, which is what it's picking up in the mic. So all that to say, this really isn't some hyper complex gating that's gonna over process your tracks. It really is just cleanly splitting the snare from everything else, which means that it's then up to you how you wanna use that in the mix. Cool, let's have a listen to one of our toms. So you'll notice if you listen really closely, there's a little bit of artifacting. And in general, toms are quite hard to differentiate from kick drums and snare drums to a machine. But with Remus kit, any artifacting you hear is always cross canceling. Blending them back in with the rest of the kit to any degree starts to perfectly cancel out any kind of artifacting. Which means in practice, in the context of the kit, you'll only hear what you really wanna be hearing and you're not gonna be hearing any artifacting. The other thing Tom Deep Leads are really useful for is triggering. So you can use this separated audio as trigger points to easily trigger your own samples if you're using some kind of trigger plugin. But I'm happy with the sound of those for now, so let's move on. So again, soloing cymbals in general, you might hear a little bit of washy artifacting, but as long as you're blending that back in with the rest of the kit, any artifacting cancels out and becomes inaudible in the context of your mix. So that being said, let's have a listen to our clean hi-hat. And now let's have a look at our overheads. So we have our shells here. I really love the snappy feel of drum shells from a really good pair of overhead mics. So maybe I want to apply a little bit of compression to those, but leave the cymbals as they are. That's easy with Remus kit. Let's open up our mixer and apply some compression. So we've now nicely brought out the attack and sustain of those shells in the overhead mics, but we haven't touched the cymbals. So once we blend those back in, That sounds really cool, and that's just something you could never do before Remy's kit. So here's our mid-side room mic that we converted to left-right. Let's listen to this separated kick drum. The separated snare. And so now we have even more fine control to blend these back into the mix as we see fit. I think let's bring the cymbals down for the room mic. Lovely, and I wanna boost that kick drum nice and high. And it just gives us more creative freedom. Now about corridor mics, personally, I love the sound of a corridor mic. I love what they do to shells, but I really don't like what they do to cymbals. So let's listen to just the shells from our corridor mic. And now let's hear those cymbals. Yeah, just a bit of mud and horror, really. So uh, what I want to do is just mute those and then we can blend the shells back into taste. So I could talk for days about how I would eventually mix this project, but I just want to do one more comparison and that is going to be between the unprocessed original raw recordings of the kit against the unmixed processed version that we've just been through. So the original. And then the processed version. So already without having done anything to it, it already sounds more focused, less harsh. And now we have all these really cool extra options available to us. So thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you found this useful and interesting and hopefully entertaining. Please do get yourself down to remuse.online and check out the free trial so you can see for yourself how much extra flexibility it's gonna give you when it comes to drum recordings. Again, make sure you're subscribed. We're gonna keep the content coming. We also wanna keep development hot for Remuse kit. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I've been Matt Brook. See you on the next one.